Good morning. Um, we've got a little bit of cloud this morning, but it's not too bad. The forecast isn't for rain. I'm in the Derwent Valley. The town behind me is Belper. And we're going to walk the opposite way to, uh, to the view. We're going to walk up onto what's called the Chevin, which takes uh, a path across the ridge to, towards Milford. And when we get there, hopefully we're going to have a look at um, the tower above uh, Milford Railway Tunnel. This is where we leave the road and head uphill. Looks to be quite a busy footpath this does. As we climb in this path, the view just gets better and better. I know it's an urban scene, but uh, it's good. And that's Belper. He dawdling behind his master. Oh, look at the view. Beautiful. There's Belper North Mill. Sitting at the side of the Derwent. We're finally at the top and there's a seat, so that's good news. Yeah. Off we go. On the old map, this is called North Lane and it's part of the old portway that we looked at in Morley, uh, which runs from Sandy Acre all the way up to Mamtor near Castleton. And this is part of that route, an ancient uh, route, pre-Roman. And I imagine it was Iron Age if it terminated at Mamtor. But we've gone into the trees now. I don't know. I don't think there is one. And everywhere you look, there's this uh, little eaten stone in the walls and even in the ground. It's everywhere, gritstone.
Just been wondering whether this uh, surface was deliberate or whether it's natural. There's definitely a cobbled surface here. And it could be uh, deliberate. Whether it dates back to when the portway was built or not, I don't know. But there's plenty of stone hereabouts to, uh, to use in its construction. Unusually, I've looked at the old map of where we're coming before we actually come here. So uh, I know what to look out for if there's anything that might be of interest. And that wall is a firing range, which is on the old map. It's not on the modern map. But we've just seen a chap who says there's a wall down there with uh, musket marks in it. So that will be the firing range. Let's go and see if we can find any musket ball marks. Yeah, you see, if I hadn't looked at the map and I'd come across this wall, I'd have thought, what the dickens is that? What use did that have? But I know now. opposite side of that wall now and there are some indents in it and there's a couple of big ones at the bottom whether they're cannonballs or not I don't know I wouldn't have thought they'd use a wall like that <laughs> for practicing uh, artillery against but there are definitely pock marks in the stone and we're just debating with uh, somebody who's who's moved on now whether they'd be muskets or whether it would be later but it's probably musketry I'll have to see if I can find anything out about it but I'm pleased I knew that it was here before we came because I knew what, what it was because otherwise I'd have thought I don't know what that wall was for so there we are a firing range target wall it really is idyllic up here. You can imagine the piece being shattered by <laughs> musket uh, firing. But it is peaceful. I wonder if she's seen a squirrel. There's an old gateway that's been made up. Still got the hinges in the uh, post. Imagine the labour involved in building this wall. It goes forever and there's a wall both sides, this, uh, this lane. Stone was plentiful and labour was plentiful, obviously. Yeah. I'm not sure if there were any quarries up here. I'll have a look on the old map. But uh, with uh, this being on the, the Chevin Ridge, which is like a continuation of the, the ridge at Little Eaton and where the quarries are, obviously ge geologically it's all very similar. Gritstone. Oh, there's a pheasant. I love these stone walls. We've just seen a man repairing one. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's nice to see that uh, they're still doing it the traditional way. We've just come to the edge of uh, Chevin Golf Course, which uh, the clubhouse is down at Duffield at the bottom. Uh, obviously there's a climb involved when you're having a round of golf because it comes right up to the top of the ridge. This upright stone is carved and it's carved H plus S and I think that's a mason's mark and I think it marks the point where H plus S ended his work and the work the other side was done by someone else and I think that's done for the purposes of paying him so that the uh, surveyor could measure the length of wall that HS had constructed and pay him accordingly. I'm pretty certain that's what that is. There'd be no other reason why there should be an upright stone in that length of wall. Now there's a view opening up to the south. And that must be Duffield, looking over the golf course. A beautiful view. And we're starting to drop down now. And the road is still punctuated by boulders. smaller stones. Navigator's just checking up on uh, our position. <laughs> Actually, they've gone off the path there to just film this squeezer style. No. We seem to come across quite a few golf courses on our walks. This is a tee. There's another made up gateway there. Look at that latch. Look at the old ironwork there. And the lead cork. Seen some history that has. There's golfers everywhere. And that's a clue to where we're situated. We're right above Milford Railway Tunnel. Yeah. And across the other side of the track is Chevin Tower. But it's on private land so we can't go and have a look inside. That's Chevin Tower. I'll try and give you a bit of background into the tower. The railway was built by the North Midland Railway in 1840. It was opened in 1840. It predates the Midland Railway which was not formed until 1844. And there are a number of theories as to what the purpose of this tower was. 
one of which was that it was a surveying tool for the alignment of the tunnel below because it sits exactly above the tunnel but a more oh hang on yeah <laughs> David Attenborough never gets interrupted like this the more plausible purpose is that it was a signalling tower and it signalled when one train had emerged from the tunnel at the north end say and he would signal to the south side to say that the tunnel was clear and vice versa uh, south to north and it's thought to be possibly the world's earliest signal box albeit not pulling levers and uh, moving semaphore arms uh, it's thought that there was some form of semaphore system using flags and then at night when it was dark they would use lamps but uh, nobody knows exactly for certain but uh, the reason it's thought that it wasn't for uh, for surveying purposes is because about 10 miles further north there's the clay cross tunnel on the same line built at the same time and there's no tower on that so um, this is thought to be a signaling tower and if it is then it's certainly a contender for the world's oldest signal box the hazards of country walking and there's another angle on the tower I've just got to be careful because I think someone's teeing off. Oh, there's a ball just landed on the on the green. There we go. There you are. You hear that train? Within the tunnel. I don't know if the camera picked that sound up, but that was a train going under the tunnel. I think we're clear to go. Yeah, so that's uh, Chevin Tower. I've always wanted to come up here, and this is the first time I've been. So I'm pleased I've been and had a close look at the tower, knowing something about its history. The railway was built by George Stevenson, incidentally. So that was Chevin Tower. We're now retracing the steps back along the portway and we're going to take a footpath to the right which will lead us to the tunnel mouth itself, the north portal of the tunnel. So we'll have a look at that when we get there. So we're going down here. It looks to be quite steep but uh, we are on top of the Chevin and we're going back down to road level. So I imagine we'll be uh, going down a few contour lines. Just taking a slight detour, there's a branch off that path going across the contour and just up here there's another vent tunnel so I'm just going to go and have a look at that. So I'm now looking towards the Derwent Valley again down to Milford, they're the new houses and uh, in the middle distance is a, uh, a vent shaft for the tunnel. You can see how the ground levels around it, that's the spoil that came out. These, t these shafts were used for access for the navvies to dig the tunnel and then once the tunnel was done they were used as ventilation, ventilation shafts and that's the purpose they serve today. And if I look over my shoulder the other way, there's another one higher up the hill and you can see the spoil that's um, been created and just left on the surface in front of it. So behind me is the other vent shaft, a little bit higher up the hill and you can see that uh, 
the spoil bin left in front of it, been deposited. That would have been, would have been excavated out of the ventilation shaft and then it would have been brick lined. And when the tunnel was complete, it would have uh, had that brickwork built above the ground level and a, and a, a, a capping put on with a, with a grate that will allow the tunnel to, uh, to breathe. And that's, uh, that's what that is. There's a herd of deer in the next field and I think they are uh, domesticated, they're not wild. Lower down the slope now and there's another angle on the, uh, the lower ventilation shaft. So as you can probably gather, we're right above the tunnel portal, the north portal of uh, Milford Tunnel. It's called Milford Tunnel I think in railway terms. It's Chevin Tunnel as well. Uh, we've just had a train go through, so <laughs> I don't think we're going to get another one in the minute. But, uh, I'm standing right above the alignment of the uh, the track here. Of course, when it was built, these trees wouldn't have been here. It would have been fairly open uh, landscape, I guess. And there we have the north portal of Milford Tunnel. I think it's eight, 800 and something yards. 853 yards, I think. Long from one end to the other. And Chevin Tower, the top of Chevin Tower I've read, is 270 feet above rail level. But it'd be no good using Chevin Tower as a signalling station now. You can't see it for trees. You know, this road's been as quiet as anything until I start rolling the camera and then all the traffic comes. And I've just missed a train as well. So it's not my day today. But that's Chevin Tunnel. Quite actually, quite a plain portal, isn't it? There's no, uh, there's no real architecture to it. I can smell diesel fumes. <laughs> Prefer coal smoke, to be honest, but uh, it's not to be. So this line was engineered by George Stevenson in 1840, it was opened in 1840 by the North Midland Railway and four years later the North Midland was absorbed into the Midland Railway There's a Derby Mound train heading into Chevin Tunnel. You can see the extent of uh, cutting through the rock that they had to do. That's just north of the, the tunnel and as the railway went through Balpa it basically cut through the middle of the town and there's my, my, at least a mile of high retaining wall each side of the line in Balpa 
and goodness knows how many bridges as it goes right through the middle of the town. So we're back at our start point, overlooking the Derwent Valley, south of Belper. Belper's behind me, there's a car coming, I think I'm alright up here. Oh, you've enjoyed that, we've enjoyed a lovely walk with some fantastic views, seen a bit of railway history as well. So uh, give it a thumbs up if you've liked it, thanks for watching and we'll see you very soon in another video.